Hey, this is Miles at Tactical Hive. Today I want to talk to you about holsters. If you've been shooting for a while, you probably already have that box of holsters in your closet or you know in, in a drawer. And it's because we want to find what fits best. And there's all these features when it comes to buying holsters. If you're a new shooter, this practical guide to gun holsters is going to help you because we're going to talk about a lot of different features that when you're buying a holster, you might not even understand what it is. So if you want to learn more about holsters and the different options out there, this video is for you. So we're calling this video a practical guide to gun holsters because we're going to talk about the practical little features and options to a lot of different holsters out there. Keep in mind that this is not all encompassing because when it comes to everything you can add to holsters, there's so many options out there, it would be impossible for us to go over every little thing. So we're going to cover the practical features that you might run into. And we are saying practical because we're going to be focusing more on self-defense, the tactile applications, rather than a more competition race holster setup like you see right here. This is not something that you're going to typically use on the range uh, when you're training for self-defense. So we're going to focus on holsters like you see here that are for outside the waistband carry and inside the waistband concealed carry for defensive situations. When people talk about holsters, doesn't matter what kind, you know, they focus on reliability. Is it secure? Is it comfortable? And of course the use. Are you using for tackle applications, concealed carry, so on and so forth. This video is not about that because you're going to figure out what holster works best for you and it's one of the reasons why I alluded to a lot of people having that box of holsters because everyone's body is different and you're going to pick up a holster that maybe some people say is the best but then you're going to try and you're going to be like oh it doesn't really work out for me because of my body type or your style of shooting so we're not going to dive into a lot of the subjective stuff we're going to focus more on the features all right so let's dive in so we're going to start off by talking about retention in no particular order here. We're going to talk about a lot of different features, but we're just going to start off re with retention. If you're just starting out with shooting, you might not even understand what retention means because retention, that term is also used in shooting, in firearms training as well, when you're shooting kind of from the hip, this is, can, can also be referred to as shooting from retention. So every holster, or I shouldn't say every holster, but every good quality holster will have some kind of mechanism in place that allows you to change the tightness of the, the, the locking mechanism or a way that you can hold on to a pistol. So I have a Glock 19 here, which is dry, and I'm gonna show you here for a second here, I'm dry. And this particular holster, has a screw here that locks down. You can loosen it, you can tighten it. And so the idea here is you're gonna find the retention uh, setting or the tightness that you like so that this holster doesn't come off. So right now I'm doing this and it's not coming off, but also a good thing is to have a shake there. Now the holster fell off. So this means the retention is not tight enough so I can tighten it up. But I wanna start off with there because if you're unfamiliar with holsters, you need to understand what retention means. And typically speaking, you want to have something like that so that you can adjust it based on your draw stroke and based on the activities that you're going to be doing. As you can see, I did, I turned that holster upside down, I shook it and the gun came out. So we'd wanna tighten this. So you'll see here, there's other holsters that have this screw here and are very similar. You can adjust the, the tightness of the retention. This as well right here. This is an inside the waistband concealed carry holster. So a lot of them will have some kind of setting or a screw that's similar, but then you'll also find holsters similar to these, which are from Safari Land, and they're used a lot in duty by cops and military, and they don't have a screw, they have a physical locking mechanism to retain the gun until someone is ready to draw that gun. So here you'll take a look, I'm gonna holster this gun and it has a retention device here where someone can press this and then the gun is unlocked and you can actually draw the gun. Without doing that, right here, I can't pull it out, okay? This is 434, similar mechanism here, right? This is the retention device, someone's thumb hits this and now you can draw. So that is important, if you're new to buying holsters or you're overwhelmed with all the options, that is what retention means. And you're going to look for something most likely that's going to have that because you you hardly want a holster that has absolutely nothing because if you get pushed over, that gun could come out. So it's a safety concern. 
Before we move on from retention options, keep in mind that there are levels to how much retention that you can have. So this is one mechanism. Some cops, for example, will have a hood that also will help lock the, uh, the gun in their holster. For civilians, that's probably overkill. But just keep in mind that this is not the end all be all, as I alluded to earlier, but just understand what retention means and then take things from there. Next, let's talk about another important feature about lots of different holsters there, and that is the, their attachments. What I mean by that is the connection point from the holster itself, the physical holster, to your belt, okay, to your person. What is keeping this on you and secure? It's super important because we've been to a lot of force and force classes. In fact, it just happened this past weekend where a lot of students are drawing their gun and the entire holster comes out. So they're trying to draw and the entire holster comes out and it's attached, they can't engage the, the threat because it's still in the holster. And you don't wanna do that. It's also very embarrassing when that happens. And that is highly correlated to the type of attachments you're using. There are so many different kinds out there. Once again, this is just a small sampling, but I'm gonna discuss some of the, the pros and cons to a lot of the ones that you might see out there. First, let's start with the probably the most common that you'll see, and it's going to be some type of hook, kind of a, a plastic hook like this. There's lots of different variations, okay? But this is a concealed carry hook where I would put it inside, inside the waistband, and so I would put this inside, and these hooks are going to go over my belt, okay? And so you will have these these different types of hooks, they can be metallic, they can be plastic, um, different designs, okay? So this, these two, for example, are very common ones here. The idea behind talking about attachments is you need to find the one that best works for you and your application. So let's discuss a few of the other ones here. So I already talked about kind of the over the top, which is kind of plastic here, okay? It's gonna hook on over your belt. And this is primarily for inside the waistband holsters. You'll see this more often because the holster is going to be hidden inside while the clips are over your belt, all right? You'll have other ones that are metallic, just like these two right here. And then you'll have ones that I don't have an example for, but very cheap plastic. The key here is definitely try them out. I will say that these right here, and I believe these are discrete carry concepts, are probably the best attachments or clips I've seen for concealed carry. Sometimes you don't even need to wear a belt and this will stay on. From there, I like these types of metallic clips here better. Okay. They are not plastic, but they seem to be more sturdy and hold better. Again, at the end of the day, you're gonna to have to try these out. Then you'll have something like this, and these also are pretty sturdy as well. They're strong plastic, they're pretty thick here, and they're not just going to come off of a normal wear and tear. But you always have to try them out because as I mentioned, in force and force training, we've had a lot of students who try and the entire holster comes out because it doesn't secure onto your belt. Try to avoid the holsters that have very flimsy plastic on them, and they're usually budget holsters that don't cost a lot. It may do what you want to in the range, hold your gun, but if you start moving and you need to draw quickly, it may not function the way you want to. While we're talking about inside the waistband holsters, primarily concealed carry holsters that you see out here at the top, let's talk about different attachments. So we already talked about these over-the-top hooks. They come over the belt and they're gonna hook onto the belt. But you'll also find two different common options out there. They're closed loops, right? Where it could be a leather strap, which is closed, meaning you, you can't detach it, right? So imagine this, this is an outside waistband, the holster, outside the waistband holster, which we'll talk about in a little minute, where you thread, the thread a belt through this hole, and through this hole, and it's pretty much attached. It's permanent. You can't easily take it on or off. You have that option with concealed carry holsters as well, inside the waistband holsters. And that allows you the most secure fit. It's not going to come off because even though these are secure clips, there's a chance, there's an opening here at the end. There's an opening, so there's a potential that it can come off. Right? So you have these clips and then you have closed loops. They can be leather or another different material, but again, they are pretty much permanent. From the concealed carry side of the house, you also have soft loops. And this is where you will have a detachable leather strap and it can button up. So to close it or to lock, it is simply a button. And those are very comfortable. They're easy to use, put on and take off compared to some of these clips where they work so well that sometimes taking off the holster can be an issue and it can take longer than you expect. Soft loops allow you to easily take the holster on and off, but there's, there is a trade-off for comfort. So 
if we're dealing with a closed loop, closed loop attachment, which I mentioned you're threading your belt through and you don't really take it on or off, that is the most secure because there's no opening. Then you get to a clip like this, which is kind of in the middle, and then you get to your soft loops. And those have that button closure. So those are the most comfortable, easy to take on and off, but they uh, are the least secure. They still can work very well, but just keep that in mind that the, they, they, that button can come off. We talked about inside the waistband holsters. Let's talk about outside the waistband holsters. You will always have an option where it's kind of like that closed loop here, but it's usually fixed. So this is an outside the waistband holster here. You thread the belt through this hole, this hole, and it's pretty much permanent. So this is very common. You'll see this a lot. Then you'll also have paddle holsters, which are very convenient as well. You don't really need a belt. It can help to have a belt though to keep this gun secure and not bobbing around if it was just your pants. And you have many different types of these paddle holsters. The idea here is it's an easy on, easy off, just plop it inside here, it's gonna attach, and then you can take it off when you're done. And you can easily adjust it as well. You can move it around your hip. So these are your paddle style holsters. Then you'll also have holsters that have an attachment on them to take on and off your belt. This is probably the most common you'll see in the defensive tactical world and even the LE world. These are Safari Land attachments, ALS attachments here. And the idea here is that you will have a holster, you connect the attachment to the holster, and then on your belt, you can adjust different types of holsters. If Let's say you have a Glock 19, a Glock 34, or whatever it might be, you need to change things up. You can easily lock it in place, and then when you're done, just detach it and get the different holster with a different attachment, and then you're good to go. And they're very secure. So understand you have a plethora of different attachments out there, and hopefully this little segment gives you an understanding of what they're named and the terminology, so that when you're buying holsters, you know what the, the website is talking about. Just a very quick recap. These are your traditional clips, okay? You will have soft loops, you will have closed loops, you will have paddles, just like you see here, or you might have something like this, which is an attachment to your belt. Okay, so there's an attachment to the holster, which then allows you to attach different holsters to your belt. That being said, these are primarily for outside the waistband tactical use, and you can see your entire belt outside. There is an option, and I'll leave a link below for the Neomag alias, and that is similar to this, but it's primarily used for concealed carry. So if you're interested in that, there's a link below, you can check it out, and we also leave you a coupon code that you can use for 10% off if you decide to buy anything from Neomag. Next, let's talk about what some will refer to as a wedge or a claw. So if you hear either of those terms, this is what they're referring to here. So. When we look at some of these, this is primarily for concealed carry holsters. When we look at some of these holsters, you'll see this right here and you'll see this right here on the edge here. It's called a claw, or again, it could be a wedge, right? And what these do is that it helps secure or push the holster into your body. And I'm gonna show you right now, side view and just like this, where you see this here. Imagine if I tighten my belt, okay? If I tighten my belt, it's gonna push down on this claw, and that allows me to have a tighter fit against my body. So if I put this here, okay, I'm gonna show you here so you can see the outside here. The belt is on top here, it would push this against my body. In essence, what this does is it allows the grip of my gun to be closer to my body, and I'm going to push this out here so you can get the angle here. So instead of this, the claw allows me to push it close to my body for uh, better concealment, right? So that is what is referred to as a claw. And some of them, you'll, you'll have different styles here, okay? Just like this, all right? And this is no longer protruding out, but it does the same exact thing here, where as you tighten the belt, it'll allow you to push that holster, the grip closer to your body. So there's less printing, so it is more concealable. So we just talked about the claw here, which once again, allows you to push the end of the pistol grip closer to your body, right? And you can adjust this to the tightness of your, your belt. Another thing that allows you to help prevent printing or allow you to hide uh, the fact that you're carrying a gun if you carry concealed is what is often referred to as a wedge or a body contour. They're pretty much the same thing. What is that? This is going to be, it could be a foam wedge or something here at the bottom of the holster 
right, closest to your body, and this is for concealed carriers, and you can see this holster has kind of a little hump here, right, compared to this concealed holster where there's absolutely nothing here on the back, this has a little hump. And what this does is you can imagine that if you put this on, this is going to force the top end closer to your body. So similar to the wedge, where the wedge was pushing the handle close to my body, this is going to push the entire top of the gun into my body because there's more material here. Some holsters, like Tentacore here, they call this a body contour and it's integrated into the holster just like this. So it pushes on the bottom of the holster and forces the top of the holster closer to your body for more concealment. If you have a traditional holster like this, you can buy foam or, or maybe there's like aftermarket wedges, something that you could Velcro or attach on here that once again are going to allow you to add some, sp add, um, some actual material that's going to push the top or help push the top into your body. So that is the wedge or the body contour. Now you know what both are. So those are primarily used for more concealment. As you look for more holsters, another term or feature that you're gonna run into is sweat guard. So what is that? This is primarily for concealed carriers. You'll hardly see this for outside the waistband holsters. It is because that if you're carrying concealed, remember we talk about comfort, some people, they might be in hot weather and you're gonna sweat a lot. So a sweat guard is this material you see here in the back that is going to be next to your body. This is a sweat guard here. And you can have different heights. It can be really high. You can have one with a very minimal one. You see right here, it's minimal compared to this gun right here. And this is personal preference. The idea here is that you can use this to absorb sweat. Maybe you don't want sweat if you're very hot and you tend to sweat a lot. Maybe you want your gun to be rather protected. So this sweat guard is protecting here and you just don't want your gun to get wet, whatever it might be. And it can also serve as protection for you too. Let's say if you're on the range shooting a lot and your barrel gets a lot, your slide gets really hot. When you put this into the holster, and there's a sweat guard here that can provide a level of protection so your body doesn't get burnt or anything like that. So this is referred to as a sweat guard. You'll see, for example, here, there's a sweat guard even for the magazine pouch here, as well as uh, the actual gun holster. You can get these higher, you can completely remove them. It's personal preference and figure out which one you like, but now you know what a sweat guard is. There's a few more holster features that I'd like to talk about. One of them is kind of like the style, the overall style of the holster that you're using. This is absolutely personal preference. And I'm gonna talk about two main ones. Remember, there's lots of different options out there. This is not the end all be all video, but we're trying to give you a taste of the most common things that you're gonna run into. So I wanna talk about the sidecar holster. A sidecar holster, if you hear that term when you are shopping around, it is where typically you're going to have your magazine pouch connected to your holster and usually it's going to be appendix carry. It doesn't necessarily have to be, but you do have this right here, it's a, kind of that side car right here attached for your magazine pouch. Other than that, you're going to have your traditional concealed carry holster where it's just going to be for your pistol. Lots of different variations in between, but that's the idea. You're gonna to have to pick which one you like and it's usually a matter of comfort. Get your regular concealed carry holster or a sidecar type holster. When you're buying a holster, you also want to consider whether or not you can adjust the cant of your holster. The cant refers to whether your gun is facing up, you're adjusting the pitch, the angle of that holster, whether it is outside the waistband, you'll see this is canted a little forward here, or inside the waistband. This gives you the freedom to adjust the holster based on your draw stroke and your use. As you see with this holster right here, this is an outside the waistband holster, you will see that the cant, it's a little, so right now I'm holding it flat, but you'll see if I add a gun here, it's, it's, this is flat, you can see it's canted, okay? This is an example of a permanent cant. This holster, you can't adjust the cant whatsoever, right? So if you want maximum flexibility, you do want one where you can adjust the cant, all right? Let me show you one more example where you can't adjust the cant. So for example, this one right here, it's pretty much fixed too. It's an inside the waistband, sidecar type holster, but you can't adjust the cant. This holster, you'll see all these screws here, and if you can see these clips, this is, there, there's some space, there's some holes here, space in the clips, where you can begin to maneuver them and adjust the cant to your liking. This is going to be 
great so that you can cater it once again to your use and to find out which, uh, which is more comfortable for you. Keep in mind, there are holsters that don't have that, but it's not to say that it's a bad holster. It just gives you more options. For a lot of people who have a, uh, a, a sidecar pouch just like this, it may be pretty much permanent where you don't really have to adjust it. Maybe there be some you know, minimal adjustments, but maybe it's not full 360 or anything like that. But keep that in mind, it's not necessary, but it does help to have that so you have options. Two other features you should consider when buying a holster are the ride height as well as how close it is to your body. Of course, it all depends if it's outside the waistband or inside the waistband. Outside the waistband here, it's not going to really matter how close it is to your body, less likely than, let's say, concealed carry. But I'm going to talk about them as a whole in general. If you have a holster, let's start off actually with uh, this right here. It's an outside the waistband holster and it's pretty tight. Okay, the tighter a holster is to your body, it's better for concealment, but who knows, maybe for your body type, your arm length, it may not be as comfortable getting your gun because it's so close to your body. And so you might wanna consider whether or not you can adjust it or the clips allow you to bring that holster out a little bit more so it's easier to grab your gun to draw. Similar with outside the waistband holsters here, or I should say tackles, more tackle style holsters that are sticking out here. If they're sticking out here and you're not worried about concealment, maybe it doesn't even matter at all because it's just easy for you to grab. The more you dive into concealed carry holsters that are inside the waistband, you might want to consider that because this is going to tie into the next feature that we're going to talk about, it's ride height. So if you have a tight holster that is also very high, it may be, and I'm exaggerating here, okay, I'm, I'm really exaggerating, no one has their waist here, but your ride height refers to how high this holster is relative to your belt, okay, so you can have a low ride, high ride, mid, mid rise, and you could also refer to it as rise. So there's mid ride, low ride, or rise, R-I-S-E. Either one is pretty much the same. So understanding this terminology will be good for you when you're on a website and looking for holsters. So consider how low or high you want that. Some of the attachments will give you the flexibility to adjust ride height to a point, but there also may be different attachments other than the little fine micro adjustments you can make on the attachment that may be something where from the very get-go, once you put on the, the clip or attachment, the holster is already really low, right? So you can consider that or you should consider that when buying your holster. So you have how close it is to your body as well as the ride height. And the last thing I wanna cover is something you're gonna run into when buying holsters and I wanna cover it because if you're new to all of this, it might confuse you. And that is your belt size. And I will just say this, that most of you are going to have a belt size of an inch and a half. They're, these tactical belts are two inches. Okay? They're bigger, thicker for tactical applications. But generally speaking, I would, I would go out on a limb and say that nine times out of 10, you're probably going to have a one and a half inch belt. If you're not sure, you can always go back to wherever you bought your belt and find out. And that's important because you want the belt clip that you buy or the attachment that you buy to fit securely over your belt. Imagine if you have a two inch clip, okay, a clip for a two inch belt, and you put it on a one and a half inch belt, there's gonna be a lot of room for movement. Your holster is not going to be very secure. So keep that in mind. One and a half and two inches are the most popular. There are two other things that I wanna discuss, which are not as important, but you might run into it. And uh, for most, it's pretty self-explanatory, but again, I just wanna get this out there and make sure it's, uh, it's clear to you. When you buy holsters, you might be asked if there's a weapon-mounted light, and that is if you have a light on your pistol, or if you have a red dot, just like this. What's important here is that you need to understand if your holster manufacturer, the one that you're interested in buying, is a universal fit, or is it something where you really need to know the specific model of your light, your weapon-mounted light, or your red dot. There are some companies out there that will have holsters that are universal. Um, you can put any red dot on there or any light and you'll be fine, but just make sure you have that in the back of your mind because you don't want to, let's say, buy this holster thinking it'll fit your light, thinking it's universal and it isn't. So I hope you like this practical guide to gun holsters. It is something that I think is gonna help out those of you who don't really know what to look out for. I know that when I was buying holsters when I first started, I didn't know what all these features was. I had to spend a little time figuring out what was what. And hopefully this saves you some time and frustration when you are buying your holsters. Well, I hope you guys liked the video. 
It's meant for newer shooters and beginners who are not aware of all the features and options out there. If there's an option that we didn't cover that you think newer shooters should be aware of, please let us know in the comments below. See you guys in the next video.